Good morning traders. Welcome to today's market review. This is Fred Rezac at CM Trading. So as the week is picking up, so is the economic calendar. Major stuff coming out all around today. At 11 o'clock we have a Euro retail number coming out and then at 145 big ECB rate decision that's going to affect the Euro and then later in the afternoon at 2.30 uh, South African time, USD non-farm payrolls, major, major number, and then followed by an employment number, and then a press conference for uh, the ECB on their rate decision at 2.30, uh, and also the initial jobless claims that is a weekly number. So really major, major numbers coming out today. Uh, glued to your monitors this whole afternoon as to what's going to happen with these rate decisions. Uh, and the unemployment change. Looking at the euro, well, let's look at a four-hour chart. Uh, we've challenged this area. We've uh, consolidated at the 135 level, and we rallied almost 200 points to 137. Now we tapered off about 55 pips right here, uh, and so you know there's a little bit of short coverings. I wouldn't say this is a real trend and real buying, okay? As it is still floating between this big retracement that it came down from 139 uh, but I you know there are certain levels that this thing can challenge um, especially if the rate decision is positive for the euro it could really rally up to 137 ish uh, 137 20 ish on the upside now on the downside we are at somewhat of a support right here maybe a support later at 135.87 uh, so you just got to play the ranges with the euro today, okay? If you do decide to trade the euro, you have to make sure that you're putting in stop losses because I expect some volatility today. Despite the fact that tomorrow is July 4th and the U.S. is on vacation and a holiday, nevertheless, these numbers are still very big numbers. Looking at the Aussie USD, big retracement, big sell-off here, as you can see, uh, over the past couple of days, um, and now we're getting to an area where we're closer to uh, a support area. Okay, this is a very big retracement, uh, almost 200 pips right here. Uh, so maybe look for a possible bounce if the dollar does get stronger. Uh, maybe we'll see some sort of a bounce if the dollar continues to uh, get weaker. Excuse me. Uh, so uh, keep an eye on the Aussie USD as it has been trading. Obviously, the GBP USD breaking new barriers up above and continuing. This is almost a 220 pip move, um, and it's and rightfully so. I mean, we've been watching this for a long time. We've really kept an eye on it. I've uh, been covering the GBP USD for a very long time. As you can see, it's been rallying from last year at 148, and we're at 170. Okay, so that's a 3,000 pip move. Um, so, you know, all together. Uh, it hasn't stopped. It continues to get stronger and continues to get stronger, as you can see here. And we're basically in areas we haven't been in since 2008, uh, which is really uh, potentially, you know, we could possibly hit even the low um, 80s, okay, by maybe by next November if we continue at this pace. Uh, so we do have some sort of a resistance right here, uh, both back in 1996-97-ish area and then retracement in November of 2005 and we bounced off of the support right here. Uh, so this is a major, major level looking at the spot right here. It's very major seeing how we had this support and this resistance previously. Uh, so if we do fall somewhere higher than 175, we could really take it up to 180s in the 80 areas. Uh, so this gap really needs to be uh, confirmed uh, before we take it up higher. Uh, but keep an eye on it because we may retrace, and if we do retrace, we'll probably retrace to 167.5. That is a major uh, previous resistance uh, and possibly a potential support for this area. Uh, so, you know, the, the British are really taking their economy very seriously, not taking any chances and really cutting back on printing some money. And as a result, it's strengthening their currency and strengthening their economy completely. Looking at the uh, 
Japanese yen, British pound, uh, it has also been very strong. This is a 250 pip move, also a big deal, big rally since uh, last summer, uh, notably at least, I don't know, 5,000 pips, okay? Uh, so, again, like I said, why should you not short this? Because this thing could still go on. Uh, the GBP can still go and make new highs. And just because it's gone this far doesn't mean that it's going to stop. Uh, so potentially it's a little bit harder to read some of the a, uh, some of the resistance levels at this level. We're actually floating at resistance of a certain level right here. Uh, resistance further at 184. So it comes to show you how far we have in order to go up further. Uh, beautiful graph. Really beautiful, beautiful graph. Looking at gold, we sold off over the past couple of days. Not much really going on in gold. We hit 130-ish, and then we retrace back to 121-ish now. Um, it should affect. It should be affected today how it does trade, uh, making a little bit lower low here, uh, but not really trading. Okay, so just keep an eye on it. If there is a breakout on the downside, you can jump possibly for a short. Uh, if the uh, economy is positive and they're expecting some good news from the United States. Looking at the czar, the czar bounced about 10 to 20 pips over the past couple of days, um, really carrying back some of its losses, but it's now trading in a range, which is beautiful. If you bought the bottom of the range at 1057, which we had mentioned uh, last week or so, uh, you'd be doing very well for yourself right now. So. Uh, as we get to the top of the range, maybe look to short, start shorting this area uh, and see how this goes. Um, the USDZR is greatly affected by the economic conditions of South Africa, obviously, and what's going on with gold and the price of gold. So uh, one and one, it has a lot to do with each other. Um, the Dow Jones just looking on its dead highs as we enter this big threshold of major news coming out today, we're literally, literally sitting on our dead highs. So, you know, someone knows something about something. If the, if, if the, if, if we get some negative news, then we'll probably retrace. Uh, but until that point, I'm not going to make any sort of predictions. I'm going to just sit tight and see how the initial reaction is and to see if it's, if it's worthy to fade, which is to take the other direction once the news comes out, or if it's worthy to trade the trend as it's, you know, if it rallies, then to continue buying the rally. If it sells, to continue to sell the rally. As opposed to uh, selling, if it goes spikes up, in the anticipation that it's going to correct itself. So those are some of the two strategies that traders use in order to, uh, to take advantage of the market. Looking at oil here, beautiful retracement. Just every single day, we're just uh, retracing, retracing, retracing. I mean, we're going down from 106 to 104-ish level, uh, not much resistance, not much support, excuse me, at this level, uh, maybe a little bit right here, but uh, really the major support is at 100, 102, 100-ish area, 102 uh, is one area. So uh, I'd still keep this on the radar just to see if uh, any news does develop in the Ukraine and Iraq, uh, see how that comes out. This is Fred Razak at CM Trading, I want to wish you guys a great trading day. Thank you.